Critical Chain. Critical Chain is a methodology created by the guy who created also the theory of constraint. It is extremely useful whenever you are talking about projects, especially in the maintenance area and also where you have a lot of people that have to somehow declare their time of doing certain things. The critical chain is basically starting from uh, the so-called Parkinson law that states basically that uh, the work will expand to the time available for its completion. So if you assume that you can do something within one week, you're going to do it within one week. If you assume that two weeks, basically you're going to do it in two weeks, especially that usually most of the time you just do nothing and then at the end you will start doing this. And this is due to the fact that once we negotiated a very late deadline, then we are so calm with the result of our negotiation that we postpone execution of certain things till the end of time. And this is the prerequisite for the method they are using. So basically in critical chain, what they say is that usually when you ask people how long it will take them, they quote some time. So let's say we have a project consisting of three activities. So A, B, and C. So out of this, if we assume that they were not aligned to us, so they are serious people and they know how long it takes, we could assume that the whole thing should take this amount of time. What happens is that later on, we actually get something like more like this. So they basically didn't respect the deadline. So they did it later and usually with a higher budget. And the funny thing is that this happens despite the fact that usually those people, when you ask them what would be the time needed to complete the tasks or the A, they put some buffer because they roughly assume that they want to give you an estimation that should be true 90% of the time. So they know that the activity basically will roughly, most cases, be like this, but then they add a buffer here, a buffer here, and a buffer here. So you actually end up with ABC being quite short, but since the buffer was hidden within the activities here, it was wasted by the guys independently. So the whole idea about the critical chain is that not to ask people to give you an estimation, assuming that it will come true 90% of the time, but uh, something which is 50% of the time true. So they want you to quote actually more realistic, lower execution time. So once you've got this, you get the central buffer you can be using and people don't have this problem that they have assumed a longer time than actually required. And they get so calm to getting longer deadlines that they didn't do anything about this. Here, the A sees that he has to finish somewhere here. So even if he's a little bit late, he'll be still much earlier than in the option where he had a huge buffer here. And then if something happens, you still have the buffer here. So you can actually give it to the activities that will need it. So in this way, you get the work done faster and you have a, a central buffer of time that you can actually use if something unpredictable happens. So for example, the scope grows. But with the approach traditionally used, you get to know that the scope is bigger than you assumed somewhere here because they start doing basically the stuff late. And critical chain will be of utmost importance if you have a lot of projects and a lot of people who do things that are not that easily measurable. So use this method to stimulate them and to work faster and finish projects within shorter deadlines.